So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and welcome aboard Sammy Watkins officially now. This this interview, this presser, it wasn't from the crib. This was Sammy Watkins introductory press conference as a Baltimore Raven actually there at the facility. Um, and I appreciated uh, a couple of different phrases that he used uh, specifically. But before we get into that, I got to say I appreciate y'all. Um, I love y'all. Thank you for being so positive on here, on other channels. Thank you for that. Just keep your heads up, man. Because there's a lot of people out there going through a lot. A lot. People that you might even be close to going through a lot and you have no idea what they might be going through. Because they might be wanting to keep it to themselves. So if somebody's having a rough day that you know and they acting sort of out of character, get them space. Don't try to shut them down. Just get them space. Give them space because they may just need a little bit of extra space for the day so they can sort of think through everything and sort of just calm down. Uh, but anyway, oh, shout out to Panera McPhee. Oh, man. See, we would have never known because th this is why. This is why I always say because people tend to get so worked up when they hear about this player, that player is absent from voluntary OTAs. They, people tend to get worked up over that stuff. But you never know what somebody's going through. And with Pernell McPhee, I believe they said his, his great-grandmother right now that's in hospice. So that's tough, man. That's, that's, that's tough. So with, with Pernell McPhee, with, his, with, with that situation going on, they said that he wasn't there at the OTAs. But they said he was still coaching up the young guys. It's like, man, like for him, he doesn't have to do that. That's not his job. He's not a coach. And with him not being there for a definite excused absence, even though it's voluntary, but for him to still take the time out to do that, that says a lot about Pernell McPhee and his character. So special shout out to Pernell McPhee. And a, a, another thing too, Sammy Watkins. Speaking of Sammy Watkins, I, I, I really appreciated um, him owning up and him just putting it out there. I mean, we already knew it as fans because it was already reported last week that he wasn't there. But... It was nice that he went and addressed, not even an elephant in the room, but he addressed that himself. He said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mad that I missed the whole week of OTAs, but I'm here now. So I appreciated that accountability. Another thing that he continued to talk about, a phrase that he continued to use throughout the press conference, he talked about uh, taking coaching. He said that so many times, taking coaching. We need to take the coaching. We need to take it. The young players need to take the coaching. I need to take the coaching. I need to learn from the coaches. We need to learn from the coaches. And that right there, that, that's what leaders do. Leaders put other people in place to lead too. And leaders respect other leaders. So Sammy Watkins is already showing his former respect. He's probably trying to get some extra catches on, on Sundays too now. But Sammy Watkins is showing respect, uh, a lot of respect to the coaching staff. So I appreciated, appreciated that a lot. Um, he talked about Rashad Bateman. He mentioned how Rashad Bateman, he knows how to pretty much run every route that's at a professional level. So, again, a lot of stuff is to be determined. Because, again, this, this is where we're going to hear a lot of good stuff. But come training camp and then after training camp, come preseason and regular season, that's when we're going to see. That's when we're really going to see. So, but this is, all, this is all nice to hear. So, shout out to Rashad Bateman doing this thing. And somebody asked Sammy Watkins about just um, about uh, when he came into the league, who were some influences on him? He talked about guys like Mike Williams. He talked about uh, Marquise Goodwin. He talked about um, Robert. Uh, forget his name. Robert from the Rams, or is it Roberts, the wide receiver, who's played Robert Woods? There we go. Oof, could not think of it. Um, he talked about how those guys, and I forget that he used to play for the Bills, uh, Robert Woods, but he talked about how those guys, they were young, but they were still helping him learn. And now he talked about the young receivers that are here with the Baltimore Ravens. And he said that he's teaching them, but at the same time, they're teaching him too. So it goes both ways. Now, uh, one question, and I respect this reporter for asking the question, and I, I did not catch the name. My apologies. But somebody asked Sammy Watkins, so what do you say to all of those people who have doubts about you? And then the reporter kind of paused, but then he didn't stop. And I was thinking, OK, he's going to ask this sort of bland question. But then he was like, no, 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 I ain't done. 
So what do you say to all those people who have doubts about you and the people who say that you won't be able to play the full season healthy and you haven't done that since 2015? He said to all the people that have voiced that and all the people that have written about that. So he talked about people maybe on radio, people who may be writing articles, people who may be making videos, maybe, I don't know. But he talked about everybody who's been saying that. And that is a very legitimate question. And I love that and I respected it because it's something that a lot of us have been thinking. Now, when Sammy was asked that a couple of months back, well, well yeah, it was a couple months back at his introductory presser, he sort of diverted it to the coaching staff on the Chiefs. And he said, well, they it's, it's up to them to uh, it's up to coach to keep me on like a count or something like that. And I just uh, I didn't really think that was the best answer. Um, but then to today, when he was asked about it, he he sort of kind of diverted again. Uh, and he said, I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that. And he and then he went to he said, well, I, I played in two Super Bowls. So I'll be just fine. And I was thinking, oh, man, well, that, that is true, because what we always talk about with Sammy Watkins, um, he has literally played in every single type of game that there is. Every type of preseason game, every type of regular season game, every type of playoff game and the Super Bowl, of course. And he has lit literally won every single type of game that there is to win. And he has lost every single type of game that there is to lose. So I feel like his experience could really help the Ravens, especially in the playoffs. But when it came to that question, he sort of like wiggled around it. And it, it sounded like he got a little bit annoyed at it. And it was like, oh, man, I ain't trying to hear that. But he also did talk about, he said, with football in the NFL, it is a 100% chance of you getting hurt, whether small injuries or whether it's big injuries. And that's true because football is a very physical sport. It's an extremely physical sport. Um, so he is right about that. But again, yeah, we all know Sammy Watkins' injury history, and it's not pretty. Again, he hasn't played a full season since 2015, but what we hope for him with the Baltimore Ravens is that this, this is the year. This is the year. Now, when they sign Sammy Watkins, this is why I said I don't feel like they can put all their eggs into Sammy Watkins' basket because of that injury history. Because the Ravens knew going in what the past was. They, they knew it's the situation. So let's see if he can sort of turn the corner and change it a bit. Um, and stay healthy this whole year. And then, of course, for playoffs and then hopefully the Super Bowl. Yeah, anyway, we, we rooting for him. We rooting for him for sure. Um, but I think that's why Ravens went so heavy in the draft at wide receiver because they know how things have been, unfortunately, for Sammy Watkins. It's just been a bad, bad bouncing of the ball for Sammy Watkins when it comes to his injuries, man. So, but hey, we hoping that again that he does a really, really good job uh, this year, along with everybody else. Now, um, somebody else who spoke uh, was T. Martin, and with T. Martin, I, I didn't get to catch uh, his entire presser because um, the Raven they said they were starting at two thirty, but they started earlier. Anyway, but one thing that I loved uh, about it wasn't even so much what he said, but it was how he said it, and the confidence that he said, the confidence that he had in himself when he spoke about himself and when he spoke about his resume he did not say it in a, in a cocky way he didn't say it in an arrogant way he just said it in a very confident way and I loved when the reporter asked him so how, how was he he asked him about him being hired by John Harbaugh and he was telling the story he said John Harbaugh asked him he said hey how would you like uh to coach with uh with Keith Williams how would you like to coach with Keith Williams and his response was okay well Hey, I, I would love it. You would be getting the best of both worlds. And I was like, ooh, okay. <laughs> Let's get it, man. And, and, and we really hope that um, his contribution, I mean, the same thing that I said from the day that T. Martin got hired and him and Keith Williams both got hired on the same day. Well, it was announced on the same day. But my hope for them it, it, it hasn't changed and it will not change. But my hope for them is that they have a voice. Like, I really hope that they have a voice and that whether it's Harbaugh, Greg Roman, Urban, I hope that everybody who's above them will listen to their input. Because, again, you look at their resume, look at the guys that have been under them. 
It's a beautiful thing. One thing, another thing that T. Martin talked about with what he brings to the table as a coach, he said since he played the quarterback position, he feels like that helps a lot because receivers, he said they'll be talking about, oh, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open. But he said one of the things that he's really trying to teach the receivers is progression. I, and I, I, I love that. But now let's see it in action. Because, again, now, now is a time where they sort of uh, they tickle our ears with everything that they're saying. And everything sounds good. Everything sounds good. But we want to see it in action. And, again, that's what these OTAs is prepping them for. That's what mini camp's going to prep them for. And that's what training camp is going to prep them for. And then comes preseason and then regular season. And it's off to the races from there. So, team, keep it clean. We'll see how things go with these Baltimore Ravens. And until then, we'll be patient. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I hope y'all are having a really, really great Wednesday. And on that note, we out.